Welcome to Cloud Infrastructure Services YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to show you how you can set up an Apache Kafka server on Ubuntu running on Azure. So simply click the link in the description box to come to this marketplace listing for Azure and from here you want to create a new virtual machine with this particular image. Now this image comes with pre-installed Apache Kafka server. So from this product page, simply click on get it now and then click on continue. After that, you would be brought to this page from where you need to click on create. And then you would be redirected to this page from where you can customize your virtual machine. So choose the subscription that you have and then choose the resource group by either creating a new one or by choosing an already existing one and then give your virtual machine a deployment name. So I'm going to call mine as Kafka and then choose the region where you want to deploy your virtual machine and then make sure that the image is the one that you got from the link in the description box. Scroll down and choose the size according to your requirements. Now for the authentication type, I am going to go with the SSH public key authentication. And then finally, give yourself a username. So I'm going to call mine as CIS. And when you're satisfied with the settings, simply click on review plus create. Now it is going to run a validation process. So wait for the validation process to complete. Once the validation is done, simply click on this create button to actually create that virtual machine. Now this time around, you would be prompted to download the private key and create resource. So click on it and download the private key in a secure folder. After that, simply wait for the deployment process to complete. Once the deployment has been completed, the next step is to actually open up an SSH terminal of a virtual machine. Now for Kafka, you would require at least three terminals. So to open up an SSH terminal, simply click on go to resource and then from this overview page, click on connect and choose SSH. And then simply copy this command and paste it inside either a command prompt or a PowerShell. And then replace this private key path for the path where you have downloaded your private key. After that, simply hit enter and when you're prompted, type in yes and hit enter once more. And after that, this command prompt is going to become an SSH terminal of a virtual machine. Now for this first terminal, we are going to start the Kafka environment. For that, simply click the link in the description box to come to this step-by-step -step blog post guide. And from here, you will find all of the commands that we are going to use. So the first command is to cd inside the Kafka directory, which is forward slash opt and forward slash Kafka. And in this directory, you want to execute the zookeeper service with this command. So paste that command inside the SSH terminal and then hit enter. And then you need to wait for the service to start. And once you see an output something like this, this means that your zookeeper service is up and running. Now we can start the Kafka broker service. For that, we need to open up a new terminal. So let me just quickly open it up. Now for the second terminal, we are again going to head inside the Kafka installation directory, which is cd into opt and Kafka. And then within this directory, we are going to run this command which would execute the Kafka broker service. So paste that command into the second terminal and hit enter and then again wait for the service to start. And once your survey looks something like this, this means that the broker service is up and running. Now we can start to create topics and write events to those topics. For that we would need yet another terminal. So let me just quickly open up a third terminal. Now in this third terminal, we are going to again head inside the Kafka installation directory using the cd command and after that we are going to execute the topic shell script. Now this topic shell script takes quite a lot of flags and these flags define what we are going to do with that shell script. For example, if we want to create a new topic, we have this command over here which takes in the create flag and the topic flag which tells us that this is the topic that we want to create. So copy this command and paste it inside the third terminal and then hit enter. Now it would prompt you that the topic was created. Now you can also use the same topic shell script to get the description of any topic that you want. For example, we have this command over here. Now you can see that instead of the create flag, we're actually using the describe flag and we're defining which topic to get the description of. So simply copy this command and paste it inside the third terminal and then hit enter. So you can see that we get the description of the topic quick start events onto the terminal. Now if you want to write events or read events from this topic, we have two different types of shell scripts. One is the producer which is used to write event and the other is the consumer which is used to read the event. If you want write event then you can use this command which you can see that is a producer shell script and we define the topic on which we want to write. So copy this command and paste it inside the third terminal and then hit enter. And then you would get this arrowhead. This means that now we can start writing events. So we can type something like this is my first event. We can even write second event and third event. But once we are done, we can exit from this by pressing Ctrl plus C. 
And now if you want to read the events from a particular topic, we have the consumer shell script. For that, simply use this command. Now as you can see that we are using the consumer shell script from here and we are defining the topic over here. So if you copy this command and paste it inside the SSH terminal and then hit enter, we would be able to read all of the events written to the quick start event topic. As you can see that the events were printed onto the terminal. Now this also brings us to the end of this video. Now if you have any queries regarding this tutorial, make sure to leave that query in the comment section down below and we will get to you as soon as possible. And also make sure to check out the links in the description box for the marketplace listing for Kafka on Azure and also for the step by step blog post guide. And finally if this video has helped you in any way, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.